Hi everyone, welcome back to Kristen's Epic Adventures. We're continuing our series on the best feature of each class out of the player's handbook. And today we're gonna talk about paladins. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when the new videos are posted. And if you found this content helpful, share it on your social media and give us a thumbs up so more friends can find us. Welcome back. Today we're talking about paladins. Now that we're continuing our series on the best feature of each class, in my opinion, out of the player's handbook. I also want to hear from you guys in the comments down below your opinion. I want to hear what you think the best thing about a paladin is. So we're going to jump right in and this is my favorite thing about paladins, but just out of the player's handbook only. We might use some other videos to maybe look at some other books down the road, but right now just the player's handbook. So paladins are pretty cool. They're kind of like a holy fighter, not kind of, I guess they are a holy fighter. They are very well trained to use weapons, but they also are kind of on a mission from their God. Okay. Um, one of the things that paladins can do that, well, there's a lot of great things that paladins can do. All paladins get divine sense right at the beginning, level one. And that allows them to know the location of any celestial fiend or undead within 60 feet. That's very handy. They also get to use a feature called lay on hands because they are a holy person. They are healers. That allows you to restore hit points to people up to um, five times your paladin level. So you even five points right at level one. It's pretty awesome. This also allows them to either cure a disease or neutralize a poison. Second level, they get to choose a fighting style and they get spell casting. So they have a whole paladin spell list at the back of the book that they can cast and they get spell slots and cantrips and all that stuff. Um, and they also get a feature called Divine Smite, which allows them to do extra damage to foes. Third level, they get Divine Health, which makes them immune to disease. That's pretty awesome. And at the third level, they also take a Sacred Oath. Now, here's the, my favorite thing. The best thing about Paladins, in my opinion, is the Sacred Oath of Oath of Vengeance. And we're going to go over that Oath of Vengeance right now. So a paladin that takes an oath of vengeance basically is into, from the player's handbook here, punishing wrongdoers by any means necessary. <laughs> um, so the different paladin oaths actually give you additional spells to go along with the regular spell list, and they're different for each oath. The oath of vengeance additional spell list has some pretty good ones in it. You're going to get things like Bane, Hunter's Mark, Misty Step, Banishment, Dimension Door, and even Scrying. And these are at different levels as you level up. But I thought of all the different oaths and the different spells that you get for each oath, that this was a great list of things in the Oath of Vengeance that you get for those extra spells. Uh, also, every Paladin gets Channel Divinity. And what that does is it allows you to add extra magical effects by channeling divine energy, okay? And you can do this once per short or long rest. And if you've taken the Oath of Vengeance, the two options you have for channel divinity are, you can either present your holy symbol and denounce a creature within 60 feet. They have to make a wisdom save or they become frightened for one minute, which is very handy if they uh, fail that save and do become frightened. Or you can take a bonus action to utter a vow against a creature within 10 feet and you'll get advantage on attack rolls against them for a minute. That is super helpful as well. Anytime you can get advantage on your attack rolls, so helpful. If you're not aware, advantage is rolling uh, the D20 to attack twice and taking the higher of the rolls. So you have a much better chance to hit, which is great. Um, so those are the two channel divinity uses for the Oath of Vengeance. Now at seventh level, for Oath of Vengeance, you get this feature that's when you hit a foe with an opportunity attack, which is a reaction, right? Hitting somebody with an opportunity attack, you can use the same reaction to move half your speed and not provoke an opportunity attack yourself. So that's pretty cool. It all becomes one big reaction. Um, you know, you're gonna attack them and move half your speed and no attacks of opportunity back against you. That was pretty cool. 15th level, 
You can use your reaction to make a melee attack against a creature within range if they're already under the effect of that vow I mentioned previously from the channel divinity. So that allows for an extra attack as well. Instead of an action, you're using your reaction. And it does have to be a melee attack within range. So five or 10 feet, depending on if there's any reach with your weapon. But that's a great option as well. These really start to increase. Um, some, of them, some of these effects increase the holiness of the paladin, if you will. And some of them increase their fighting, which is awesome because that's what a paladin is, a combination of those two things. Okay, and the 20th level, which is for me what sealed the deal on making Oath of Vengeance the best thing about a paladin. At 20th level, you assume the form of an angelic avenger, and this gives you two different options that you can do. The first one, which I thought was the best, is you get to grow wings for an hour as an action, and you have a 60-foot flying speed. So yes, you are a paladin, a holy fighter with wings. You can fly. I'm seeing a theme here that every time there's something to do with flying and wings, I am all over it. Apparently, I really like my characters to fly. <laughs> anyway, that's one option, right? Growing wings. The other option actually puts a 30-foot aura around you with you in the center. And any creature that enters that aura or starts their turn in that aura has to make some kind of a save or become frightened. And again, we've mentioned being frightened a few times and it's a really great condition to affect a foe with because they're going to have to try to move as far away from you on their turn. Like they can only, they have to use their movement to move away from you. And I believe they can only use like the dash action to try to go even further from you. So basically you're frightening them and they're running away. But I thought that was the coolest thing Wings at 20th level, Paladin. Oh, Oath of Vengeance. I love it. And you're just out there to destroy all your enemies with vengeance. <laughs> but I want to hear from you. What do you think is the best thing about a Paladin? Whether it's player's handbook or an option in another book. Um, let me know. Have you ever played a Oath of Vengeance Paladin that got up to 20th level and got those wings? I want to hear that story if you did because I bet it's pretty amazing. Anyway, we're going to keep continuing with our series on to the next class. Make sure so you don't miss any of these videos, you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when the new videos are posted. And if you found this content helpful, share it on your social media and give us a thumbs up so more friends can find us. We'll see you next time. Bye.